Uh, welcome back. So in the previous part of the video, uh, we started talking about the ideas behind the multi-scale expansion method, uh, and 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 we discussed how um, um, uh, the multi-scale expansion will involve introducing new time scales into the problem. Um, so if we have to calculate just the leading order term uh, in the expansion, uh, so 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 for instance, uh, for instance, uh, we, we we look for an expansion of the form uh, y, which is a which is y naught, which will be a function of t and tau plus epsilon times y1, which is a function of t and tau, and here tau is epsilon times t. Um, so, so we'll think of, or we'll formally write the expansion as if y was a function of two variables t and tau. Now, this particular expansion where we've introduced one additional time scale, uh, or in other words, this expansion in terms of two time scales will consistently give us uh, uh, the leading order solution y0 for this problem. Uh, it will also tell us that y1 in fact remains bounded because because uh, we will ensure that y1 remains bounded. We need to ensure that y1 remains bounded in order to calculate y0 as we'll see. Um, but it will not tell us uh, explicitly y1 or higher order terms. And if we need to calculate higher order terms, we will actually need to introduce even more time scales. For instance, we might introduce a third time scale, which is epsilon square times t, uh, if we have to calculate y1 and y2. Um, and so on and so forth. So, so, so actually using the multi-scale ex expansion method to calculate higher order terms becomes progressively very, very complicated. Uh, it involves a lot of steps. Um, so we restrict ourselves to calculating y naught. In the process, we'll also show that y1 remains bounded um, uh, and therefore there are no secular terms to this order in, in, in expansion. Um, um, and, 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 uh, and, and so let's now formally see how, uh, how to do that. Um, so, so notice that if we have to plug in this expansion into this expression, we need to calculate the second derivative of y with respect to time t. Um, so first of all, uh, the first derivative of y with respect to time t will be of the form uh, as we calculated in the previous video. It will involve the partial derivative uh, with respect to time t plus epsilon times partial derivative of y with respect to time t. Uh, or if we plug in the expansion for y, since y is y0 plus epsilon times y1, uh, we'll have two terms dy0 d tau plus epsilon times dy1 uh, sorry dt plus epsilon times uh, here we have dy0 um, d tau plus epsilon times dy1 d tau. Uh, now notice that uh, here we have picked up a second order term uh, order order epsilon square term which we which we ignore because we are only calculating expansions to order epsilon square and so even uh, so 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 the first derivative of y would actually read uh, would only include these three terms um, so we get rid of this term we won't we won't keep it in our expansion um, we now need to calculate the second derivative which is d two y d two two and uh, so that will basically involve calculating partial derivative uh, of this of dy dt with respect to time t plus epsilon times the partial derivative of dy uh, uh, the, oh, let me just write it down so we will have uh, dy naught d tau dt plus epsilon dy1 d uh, epsilon times dy1 dt plus epsilon times um, dy naught d tau so the partial derivative of this with respect to t plus uh, we'll also have a term of this form, so epsilon times d t tau uh, of all these terms. So d y naught d t plus epsilon times d y one d t plus, and we can actually uh, well, we can actually get rid of uh, we can actually ignore writing these terms, so let me just write it for now. D y naught d tau. Okay, uh, so let's simplify this. So we we'll see that d2y dt2 is actually involves the second uh, the partial derivative of y naught uh, two partial derivative of y naught with respect to the variable t so d2y naught dt2 plus uh, we'll have a term of order epsilon uh, which is epsilon uh, d2y1 uh, dt2 uh, plus uh, a term of order epsilon now this is a mixed derivative so epsilon d2y naught dt d tau. Uh, 
here again we have a d2y not dt d tau two order epsilon so we'll have twice of this and these terms are again of order epsilon square so we can just ignore them in our expansion and so the second order uh, the term d2y dt2 the second uh, or, or second order derivative term would actually have this as our expansion okay then we have a y uh, which is y naught plus epsilon times y1 to order epsilon squared. And then we have this y cube term, epsilon times y cube actually. And this will read epsilon times the cube of this expression, y naught uh, plus epsilon y1 whole cube. Now when we cube this, uh, we have y naught cube plus all terms which are again, which will give us, uh, since we have an epsilon multiplying this, uh, all other terms will also carry some power of epsilon which we can ignore. So to order uh, epsilon, we only have the term epsilon one naught cube. Plus we have i of terms. Plus of epsilon square and so on. Plus okay, so the complete expansion will have the all, all these three terms. So we'll have this, we'll have this, and we'll have this. So let's put this into the equation and see uh, what the equation looks like. Um, two different orders actually in, in epsilon. Uh, so let's just write down what will be the zeroth order term. So to uh, order epsilon zero, we will have uh, d2 y naught dt2, y naught dt2, plus uh, there's a zero order term here, which is y naught. Uh, and then all other terms are of, will carry some order of epsilon. So the zeroth order expansion, um, uh, to this differential equation will be d2 y naught dt2 plus y naught equals 0. Okay, and then we have a first order uh, expansion term which will be uh, d2 y1 dt2 y1 dt2 plus uh, a term from here which is y1 um, and then we also have this term plus 2 times uh, d2 y naught uh, d t d tau and then we'll have a term from here plus y naught q equals 0. So we have these two differential equations to solve now. Uh, one of them is order epsilon 0 which is this and the second is order epsilon which is this. Um, now notice again that in this differential equation uh, when we solve this differential equation we would have already solved for y naught subject to the initial conditions which we also need to work on. Uh, once we have solved, once, or actually we wouldn't be get, getting the complete solution, but we will know what the form, functional form of y naught. We, we can then plug it in here, uh, and then we need to solve for y1. Uh, and, and we'll see what formally that involves, because uh, one of the important things here is that these involves partial derivatives. So this is a partial derivative of y naught with respect to time t. These are, this is again a partial derivative of y1 with respect to time t. Um, and so we'll have to keep that in mind when we're solving the differential equation. Uh, so, uh, so, so let's just write down the solution to this differential equation, which we've already worked out several times. Uh, this is a familiar second order linear differential equation. Now, the formal solution to this uh, as a function of t and tau would actually be of the form uh, some uh, parameter. Let's just write that as uh, a, which will be a function of time t times cosine t plus b which is a function of time tau sine of t okay uh, now notice what's uh, important here uh, if this was a complete derivative y naught with respect to times t with respect to time t uh, in other words if there was no time scale tau into the problem we would have written the solution as a some constant a times cosine t plus some constant b times sine t but now y naught is a function of two time time scales t and tau and the solution to this differential equation would have the same, in terms of the variable time t, would still have uh, a cosine t and a sine t, but the prefactors or the constants are actually function of the time tau, because in general they could be functions of, of time tau, because this is a partial derivative with respect to time t, whereas y naught is a function of t and tau. So, 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 so the dependence on tau can only come into these sort of, what we typically think of as constants. Um, now, another way, uh, of expressing this uh, relation is again to use Euler's identity and write it in terms of exponentials uh, which offers a somewhat neater way of writing the expansion um, and, and, and if we actually do that we see that the solution is actually of the form uh, 
some complex constant or some constant function complex function of time tau times e to the power of i of t uh, plus the conjugate of this tau e to the power of minus i of t. So we can write down the solution in this form. Um, and now we need to figure out what this a tau is, or rather these two functions are. Now, again, here we need to figure out two variables a and b. Uh, and in this case, when we are writing this as a complex uh, function, so here a and b are real functions, but if we write it in this complex notation, then a, capital A tau is a complex function, and a complex function would have both a magnitude and a phase, and therefore that again involves finding two variables of tau, which is the same as finding two variables of tau a and b here. Um, and, the, and the way to find these two variables of tau is actually to plug, it, plug this equation, uh, plug, plug this solution for y0 into the second differential equation, and to make sure that there is no secular term in the solution for y1. Um, so, so, so let's do that in the next part of the video, how, how we can actually solve for a tau, uh, such that it gets rid of any secular terms in the second order, uh, in, in the next expansion term, which is y1, um, and see how that comes about. So, um, so see you in the next part of the video. Thanks.